Inside of Blender, uh, just create a circle. Make sure to only give it six vertices, which forces it to be a nice hexagon, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and say that it's a triangle fan inside, and that'll give you uh, a few vertices to start working with. From there, do a subdivision, and that, or a bunch of subdivisions actually, depending how detailed your pieces are. Uh, that will give you a lot more geometry that you can actually work with. From there, switch over to uh, sculpt mode, and just start pushing the land up and down. Make sure to add lots of little details in here if you can. Um, they may not be super visible when you first machine it, but they will show up in the end. Um, you know, areas like rocks falling down from the mountains or a little path or a, a lake. Um, in this case, this is just a mountain, but it's the exact same process for all of the other tiles. I ended up getting it machined at a local machine shop since I don't have a router. Um, I used ash because that's what I had in my shop. Um, ash is a fairly, has a fairly coarse grain to it, uh, which I didn't think would actually turn out really well, but in the end I was really happy um, using ash. I'm just taking a, another scrap piece of ash that I had, planed down to roughly the height of the edges that I wanted, um, and then just using my table saw to cut them roughly into shape. These little grooves are actually used for storing the pieces um, when we're not playing with it. Um, I'll, again, I'll also explain this a little bit more later, um, but for now I did this probably one of the dumber ways I could, which was print out a scale sheet of where these slots are and then measure and one at a time cut them. I definitely don't think this was the most efficient way to do it. I'm just cutting the edges to the right size. Um, making sure that it's a, as close to the right size as possible really helps because then um, as you cut the angles, you know the boards will line up and they won't be too short or too, um, too long for all the pieces that are inside. So I'm just using calipers to make sure they're accurate. really hard time getting the bevels on these to be really nice. I tried a couple different times and kept having it be, you know, the angles were too wide or too short and I couldn't get it to have a nice, you know, hexagonal fit all the way around the pieces. Um, so I'm using this just to basically copy the angles off of a printout and put that onto my chop saw. Um, that actually worked out the best out of a lot of different things that I tried since I don't have a really accurate angle gauge and the little angle gauge on the bottom of the chop saw is super accurate. Of course, just do a test fit once you have those, um, because those angles are kind of tricky to get exactly right, um, and you want it to be a reasonably snug fit but not too snug, um, as throughout the seasons, your pieces will kind of expand and contract a bit. So you want a little bit of play in your pieces. There was a lot of painting to do on these pieces. I just used the cheapest paint that I could find on Amazon and also the cheapest paint brushes I could find. Uh, I'm by no means a great painter. This is the first time I've ever really done kind of a bigger painting, you know, detailed project. Um, so a lot of it was trial and error. In this case, for pretty much all of these pieces, what I ended up doing was mixing kind of a darker base layer of whatever I was looking for, um, letting that dry, and then just adding some white or yellow, depending on the piece, and adding kind of a dry brush on top, which just ac uh, accentuated some of the details. Um, that actually brought out a lot of the grain in the wood, which originally I thought I wouldn't like, but I actually really did. It added a lot of detail to these pieces um, that just 3D printing or having like really hard, you know, smooth wood wouldn't give you. So in this case, these are just the grain tiles 
Um, so I added a really, really bold yellow for the grain, um, kind of a uh, like a grayish brown for the path. Um, and again, after each layer, I would paint them, paint them solidly, and then just adding increasingly light um, dry brushes on top, just to accent a lot of the details. In a lot of cases, I would pull out the actual Catan tiles just to get kind of a reference right there of what sort of color I was looking for. In this case, doing the desert is pretty bland. There aren't really a lot of details in it. So when I modeled it, uh, I brought in a, a picture of a dinosaur skeleton and kind of added it um, so that that could be embossed. And again, just tiny little details uh, kind of go a long way adding depth to your world. To model these brick tiles, I ended up using a boolean inside of Blender. So I made some cylinders um, to give kind of the sharp edges that were cut out of the rock and then used a boolean to remove them from the object. That gave some really nice sharp clean edges in the area that had been excavated. Um, some of that detail was lost in the machining because it was done with a ball a rounded tool. but it still added enough kind of sharp edges that it looked very distinct compared to the grass around it. This grass, I ended up using the same color on the brick as I did on the mountains. Um, again, it was both just kind of accent grass. It wasn't really the detail of the piece, so I just used the same. As with all of these pieces, I started with a really dark base coat and then just kept adding white on top of it um, to lighten up the base coat and then dry brushing it on top, a little bit lighter each time. Painting the wood tiles were the ones that I was most concerned about and so I sort of left them to the end. Um, you have grass around it and then you have bush kind of in the middle. Both of those are just green though. And my concern is that it would just sort of turn into this green lump. So what I ended up actually doing was going outside and pulling some grass out of my yard and some leaves off the trees and bringing those in and trying to color match them as best I could. And that seemed to actually go a really long way because grass is a more, usually more of a yellowish tinge as it dries out, whereas leaves are usually a hardier kind of green. In this case, just another dry brushing on top just to sort of accentuate some of the details that I had made in Blender. After putting all of this work into machining the tiles and sanding them down and painting them, I really wanted to protect my work to make sure that nothing um, kind of flaked off the paint. This paint can chip off fairly easily. Uh, so I'm just using a coat of Wipe On Poly, a fairly heavy coat. Uh, I'm just using a paintbrush to make sure I get into all of the details, though you probably could do it with not a paintbrush. Around the outside of the edges of my board, I want to put magnets in. That makes it so that you can really easily just snap the pieces together, they'll hold, but it doesn't really add a whole lot of extra um, attachments um, to make all of that work. So the problem with magnets is they are somewhat forgiving on positioning relative to one another but they're not super, super forgiving. So I wanted to make sure that the holes that they were mounted in were all almost perfectly aligned or as close as I could get them. There are other ways you can do this if you have finesse, I don't. So what I ended up doing was modeling up a tiny little uh, jig inside of Blender 
that I can slide over the end of each of the edge pieces and that will give me a hole exactly where to drill. Once all the ends were drilled out, I just used some quick clamps just to clamp them together and hold them as one piece, which made it much easier uh, for me to work on them. I used some five minute epoxy and just a nail to get it in there to hold the magnets as best I could. One thing to really keep in mind when doing this is make sure that all of your pieces are all clamped the exact same way. By doing this, that makes it so you can just quickly stick in the magnets uh, from a stack, and then that way they will all be pointing, the, the poles of the magnets will all be pointing in the right direction. So your, your pieces will all snap together really nicely. Once all the magnets are in, I'm just using the head of a nail just to try to push them flush. Um, not too deep, uh, but they are rare earth magnets, so they should be strong enough even if they are recessed a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Now that the edges are all done and the pieces are all painted and sealed, we'll fit them all together for one final check. So for storing all of this, you could put it all into a box or a bag or something like that. This is what I use those slots for that we cut earlier. It's to make it so that you can actually slot the playing pieces into the back side of the edges. Once they're all kind of in, you can sandwich it on three sides and just use a piece of Velcro to wrap it around and hold them all tight. And it actually holds reasonably well and it packs up fairly small too. Now this edge support only worked for the main pieces. I have no idea how I thought the other ones would work. I couldn't make, it, make them work. So there's only storage on the back for the main game pieces, not the water pieces right now. 